Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is my review of Ubuntu 22.0 for the LTS release. Now, the reason I didn't do this video yesterday is because I wanted to actually play around with the LTS release for a little bit, as even with like the latest beta release and this actual LTS release, there have been some improvements. For example, this right here, this is the icon for the uh, welcome startup screen. A day before release, it was pretty ugly. I pointed that out and I'm happy they fixed it because that's just something I would have kind of uh, talked crap about. Their new logo still is an interesting design choice. It looks a lot like the uh, Microsoft, what is it, SharePoint logo, which I find rather interesting. And I'm also not gonna run through the installation process because it has not changed between any of the old Ubuntu versions. Uh, when we checked out the beta, they were testing out the uh, new Flutter installer, which visually is a lot more impressive, but it was simply not done, so it's not gonna be included in this LTS release, unfortunately. And even with this little welcome thing, there's not too many new stuff. I always tend to enable location services. I like my weather stuff to come through. I do wish they'd kind of clean this up, maybe capitalize some of these things, make it look a little bit better. Somebody I think on Mastodon was complaining that a lot of these applications that it shows you from the start are proprietary. Uh, in my opinion, that's completely fine because this is like the go-to generally noob distro. And if you need Microsoft Teams, it's here and available. It's software availability is very important, whether if it's proprietary or not. So hit done, we are in our Ubuntu desktop. I'm not gonna run through every single specific change, uh, but what I am gonna do real quick is open up the settings because there's something else I noticed that was a uh, different. If we go down here, go to about, you can see this is the latest version, their new logo and all that. Wayland is the default, unless if you're using a NVIDIA graphics card. A lot of people are saying that that is the default, but at least according to the official release notes, it says, and I quote, the default session for most systems that don't have a NVIDIA graphics card is now Wayland. And of course, like always within your uh, login screen or the uh, dis GNOME display manager, you could select the X org if you need to, if you're having some sort of application issue. And within this release, probably the biggest thing other than the Wayland shift is the version of GNOME. They're going with GNOME 42, which is actually the latest version. So it's not like some older version on this release because it performs better, but, or is more stable but that does come with some cons because not all of the applications are GNOME 42 applications. So if we go over here, no, it's down here. If we go down here, they do have some things. So like the text editor here, I talked about that in our GNOME video. And then from here, I'm pretty sure this one's still G-Edit actually, that's supposed to be rebranded completely to text editor, but you can see this is using version 41 of G-Edit. So it's using the GTK3 toolkit. For example here, I'm pretty sure the image viewer. So if I open up image viewer, this, I believe, completely ported over to GTK, not preferences, uh, GTK4 and GNOME 42. So if I go about, you can see this is 42. While again, if we go over here to the text editor, it is 41. So there is some variation between some of these applications and the toolkits they're running. Thus, there will be some visual differences. It's kind of hard to notice. But for example, even opening up this little hamburger menu, you can see this is a uh, drop down. This goes off to the side. So th there are some differences between the applications. So it's not completely consistent, but it still looks pretty good. And what I'm hoping is as some of the point releases come out, so Ubuntu 22.04.1, uh, some of these might get updated and uh, ported over properly. Some other desktop changes, you see this little home icon down here, it, by default there will be in the bottom right corner. Uh, throughout settings, there are some changes. The big one that everybody's gonna be pointing out and noticing is this, uh, the accent colors, so I can switch to completely dark, or this mixture of light and dark, which we kind of saw when we opened up that image viewer. And then of course we have all the different accent colors, which will shift automatically for you. So that's nice. And they just introduced this feature into a KDE Plasma ra rather recently. So throughout most of the major desktop environments and Windows and Mac, you will have the option for accent colors. So that's super nice. Down here, we have some new dock options. So typical things like icon size position. If I go to configure dock behavior, we have some more settings. So show volume and devices, which according to the release notes, that's another thing is it will better support external devices integrating with your dock and your file manager when you go ahead and plug those in. And this is gonna be the first LTS release with Firefox shipping as a snap package. You could obviously change this, remove it, 
and download it directly from Mozilla if you'd like to. But I have not opened up Firefox, so let's see how long this takes to open. Ready, set, click. And there we go, okay. So it's open. Now it's not gonna take that long every single time if you don't switch out the snap package. For example, if I completely close this out and open it again, it should be a little bit quicker, which it is. It's not instant, but it's a little quicker. That's really the only con and the only time you'll notice that super big slowdown is the very first time you launch the application. And if you hate snaps, like I kind of do, like if I was installing this and running this as my main system, I would just remove that and get it directly from Firefox or even switch it out for the snap package. But speaking of, I uploaded a little video on a performance between all the different packaging formats, snaps, flat packs, app images, and DNF and APT. So check out that video. It's a good one, in my opinion. I'm a little biased. It's my video. <laughs> And this was basically my first boot. And one thing you may have noticed didn't happen was the Ubuntu Pro notification to try to get you to sign up for that for extra support. That was uh, stripped out from the LTS version. However, according to the uh, bug report, it is probably going to be coming back in the future. But for now, we won't be seeing that kind of a little ad advertisement within our system. So as various point releases come out, it is going to be cool to see the little changes they make with this LTS version. Uh, but for now, it's uh, it's honestly it made some pretty substantial improvements, especially if you uh, compare it to like the last releases, like I believe 20, uh, 21.10 and 21.04. Those are kind of eh, it didn't seem like it was going in a very positive direction. But this LTS does clean up a lot of the uh, issues I was having with it. It's still kind of weird with the mixture of the applications, but it's really not that bad, especially if you're uh, somebody who's used to using KDE Plasma. You get a lot of variation between different applications, especially title bars and things like that. If I open up Firefox here again. Firefox does a really nice job integrating with GNOME, which is one of the things that I really like about it and does thus does good integrating with this version of Ubuntu. So it is nice seeing Ubuntu uh, better trying to integrate GNOME into their desktop and not just have a, a older, weird, modified version of the desktop. And generally with how polished everything is, it kind of gives me a Fedora vibes, which is pretty good because Fedora currently is my favorite. It's a very, very polished distribution. It's still the one that I would recommend over Ubuntu, but this has uh, gone up a few steps, in my opinion, compared to what we've been seeing with these uh, Ubuntu releases. Um, I do hope you enjoyed my little review of it. I will be uh, linking down below to the official release notes as well as an article that I wrote on the release. So uh, please go check those out and Download links will be below as well uh, with all that. I do hope you all have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.